In the last lesson, we learned how to modify our message box to show different types of buttons. In this lesson, we will go one step further and change how the message box looks and acts. Start by going back to the message box help file and scroll down to remarks. We now want to look at the column heading that says Icon Related Result. By using these values in the flag parameter, we can add different types of icons to our message box. As you can see, according to the help file, changing the flag parameter to 16 will show a stop icon in our message box. Go ahead and head back to your script and change your message box flag parameter to 16. Next, we will want to run our script to see what our new message box looks like. Up until now, we have been running our script by going to Tools and selecting Go. That is fine and it will work, but as you program and auto it, you will want to start developing habits that will make writing code faster. One of these habits is using shortcut keys or hotkeys. The hotkey to run a script is F5. Go ahead and try to run your new script using the F5 key. After you press F5, your script should run and you should see a new message box that displays a stop icon like this. As you can see, this is a nice feature to have because you can display different types of icons. But what happens if you want to display an icon and have more buttons than just the OK button? Well, if you want to do that, we need to start by going back to the help file and decide what buttons and icons we want to show. For this example, let's say we want to display the question mark icon and show two buttons, a yes button and a no button. To do that, we need to add the flag values of the yes and no buttons here together with the question mark icon flag value here. Since we know that our yes and no flag value buttons have a value of 4 and our question mark icon flag values have a value of 32, we need to add them together so we get a value of 36. Let's test it to see if it works. Go back to your script and change your message box flag value to 36. And then run the script to see what happens. Great, it looks like our script is working just the way we want it to. You can now create all kinds of different button and icon combinations by just looking at the help file and adding the values of the buttons flags together with the values of the icon flags. However, before we move on to the next tutorial, let's update our message box so it makes sense. Right now we are displaying a question message box, but we're not really asking a question. Let's start by changing the title parameter to run notepad. We will do that by typing run notepad between the two empty double quotation marks of the title parameter. Next, we want to change the text parameter from hello world to would you like to run Notepad?
make sure your title parameter and your text parameter are exactly the same as in my example or you may get some errors when you try to run the script. Once you are sure the script is the same as mine, go ahead and run it to see what it looks like and to make sure it works. We now have a message box that asks us whether or not we'd like to run Notepad. As I'm sure you have figured out, in our next tutorial we will build on this code so when the user clicks yes, it will automatically run Notepad. This is where our code will start to get interesting because we can start to build scripts and programs that we can actually use in the real world. If you are a MrAudit.com member, go ahead and take the test on this lesson to make sure you completely understand the concepts you just learned. Then take the skill test called Custom Message Box with Icons. I will see you on the next lesson where we will start to learn how to automate Notepad.